the Jason denim completed. But we can now move on to the next DIY. And today we're gonna try to make some capital thunder or is it lightning sashiko shorts. And I'll show you guys how they look like. Like that. Wow, cool. Hey, you guys may think it's it's simple, right? But there's actually a grind in itself because all of that was probably done by a machine. I don't got a sewing machine that can do these types of stitchings. So I'm gonna do everything by hand. So that's the grind. Obviously it's gonna be a lot different than the, the Jason ones. You know, this is straight up cut and sew, sew it on and everything like that. Of course it's still a grind. This one, different category. And also the shorts that I'm gonna be using is actually very, very big, very baggy and like oversized. I've been meaning to size them down. I think this is a good opportunity to do that, um, but it might be a little difficult because of how big they are and how much I want to downsize them or Maybe I just overthink things. I don't know, but I'll just show you guys real quick how the shorts look like. Very big shorts. Probably should have wore different shoes or even socks, but it made sense at the time. So yeah, as you can see, the pants are really baggy. Now I feel like in the future, I may regret doing this. Maybe my style will change and I'll be like, damn, I wish I kept the, the size and how baggy and how long they were. But honestly, at this point in time, I don't care. So let's just cut these up. But you can see from this angle, just them laid flat. Hella baggy. Let's actually measure the width of the pant leg opening. Let's see. 16 and a half inches wide. Damn. I don't really know exactly what to slim it down to. Obviously, I don't want to make it too like regular fitted. Maybe I'll take away like two inches. Yeah, so I'm gonna take it down two inches, both sides, bring up the crotch to like maybe up to here or so. Change of plans, originally I was gonna take it in at the inseam. It's a little difficult to work with because there's just like so much fabric. And when you try to line it up, make it flat and flush with each other, like the front of the back panels, it's nearly impossible because the panels are, they're not flat, they're curved. So instead, we're gonna work with the out seam instead, bring it in on this side. I'll just make it so that they're not so like belled out, if that makes sense. Y'all already know what the first step is. Let's say it together, open up the hems. <laughs> hey, if you said it with me, you're a real one. Of course you don't have to, but that just be the lazy way if you don't do it. And honestly, it really won't look that great. And then of course, press the creases with an iron to flatten them to make them easier to work with. So I decided to taper the pants at the out seams, taking away two inches to reduce the belled out look of the silhouette. I tried to like the look of it, but the shorts are just way too wide for my taste. Now, if they were pants, it'd be fine, but yeah, not these. The taper starts at the bottom of the hand pockets near the top of the shorts. I then goes down to two inches from the out seam where the edge of the shorts will be after re-hemming them at the end. And then after that, a straight line down the hem folds to the end of the fabric. To prevent the edges from fraying, since I still don't know how to use my serger, I sewed in a zigzag stitch along the edge to keep the threads intact. I then refolded the hem, following the original creases, and then sewed it back in. Here are the measurements I came up with for the Thunderbolts. It's probably best not to use the same exact numbers as I did, since the shorts I'm using are bigger than normal. But to start it off, I sewed in the outline of the Thunderbolt, as this was the first thing I had to sew in. The chalk rubs off and can be wiped off easily, so it's okay to make mistakes here. And it's fortunate that I'm using black denim because it's really easy to see the white chalk. And now it's time to create the Sashiko design by starting up the repetitious grind of hand sewing. I completely forgot how long Sashiko stitching takes. Like I just finished the secondary outline here and that took a while, like an hour or something like that just for this. I think it was a little bit more than an hour actually, but I was, I was watching some things. So I was a little distracted, but regardless, this still took an hour plus just to do that. And so I got to make the designs and all that stuff. Well, it's part of the grind, you know, so let's get back to it. And back to it I did, but now to work on the more complicated stitch design. Just like the perimeter, I started drawing the guidelines of the design. I drew them in piece by piece. If I were to draw out the whole thing in one go, when I start hand sewing, the lines would start to fade and eventually become nothing, and then you're stuck with no guidelines mid-stitch. So little by little is the way to go. Basically, I draw it in, sew it in, and then repeat. We're 
finally at the last stretch of this hand sewing process. Oh my God, it took so long. I'm not really used to this grind anymore. But the last thing that we have to do is sew in like the petals that go horizontal, like along this line here. Now, as I was doing this side, the first side that I did, um, I learned a more efficient way to recreate this pattern and that's to sew it in in sections. So like what I did for this side is I did the lines first, so these lines and then the lines that went this way. And then now I did these petals that went up this vertical line. And now we have to do the petals that go horizontally. Cause the thing that took the most time was when I would stitch something, then I have to tie the knot, cut it, rethread my needle, and then just go through that process over and over again. But doing it this way, I can just sew a continuous stitch all the way to the end, uh, which basically reduces the amount of time where I have to thread my needle. It's one of those things where you do one thing for so long, you end up figuring out what techniques work faster than others, and then you fall into a rhythm. The second Thunderbolt took way less time than the first because I've technically done it before. Random question, but it kind of relates. Why does the drive back home always seem shorter than the drive to the destination? But that's basically how sewing in the second Thunderbolt felt like. Finally.